Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Gopijana Vallabha Giribaradhari Jaya Gopijana Vallabha Giribaradhari Yasura Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yasura Nandana Braja Jana Ranjana Yamuna Tira Vanachari Jamuna Tira Vanachari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jaya Radha Madhava Kunjabi Hari Jai Mr. Pad Paramahamsa, Parajaka Charja Ashtotar, the Sri Srimad of Divine Grace, Srila AC Bhakti Vedanta, Swami Prabhupada Ki Jai. Iskan BBT Foundera Charja Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramahamsa, Parajaka Charja Ashtotar, the Sri Srimad of Divine Grace, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thako Ki Jai. Ananda Koti Vaishnava Ki Jai. Nama Charja Srila Haridas Thako Ki Jai. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Jai. Sama Veda Bhakti Vrinda Ki Jai. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to the assembled devotees. All glories to Shiguru and Goranga. Haribo. Now, just to, you weren't here. We locked that door to avoid what happened last night because I just wandered in. But if someone wanted, wants to get in there, they may knock. So you see who it is, okay? And you see. And if they know to go around the back, then they're probably all right. <laughs> probably all right. <laughs> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. <coughs> On the 17th day of August 2020 in San Diego, we're reading from Srimad Bhagavad Gita as it is, translation and commentary by His Divine Grace A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami Prabhupada. We are in Chapter 18, the conclusion, conclusion, the perfection of renunciation, text 59 on page 699. Okay, I'll wait for our friend Mukundak Sharan to get 699, page 699. Okay, text 59. Yadahankara mashritya Nayotya dimanyase Mityaisha bibasayaste Prakatis tvan niyokshyati Yadahankara mashritya Nayotya dimanyase Mityaisha bibasayaste Prakatis tvang niyokshyati Yadahankara mashitya Nayotsya dimanyase Mityaisha bibasayaste Prakatis tvang niyokshyati Yadahankara 
Yadahankara Mashitya Nayotsi Itimanya Se Mityasha Vivasaya Ste Bhagativ Swam Niyokshyati Yadahankara Mashitya Nayotsi Itimanya Se Mityasha Vivasaya Ste Bhaktis Tvam Niyokshati Yadahankara Mashutya Nayotya Itimanyase Mityasha Vivasayaste Bhaktim Tvam Niyokshati Ladies Yadahankara Mashutya Nayotya itimanya se Mityasha bibasaya ste Pakatis tvam niyokshati Yet if ahankaram of false ego ashritya taking shelter Nayotye I shall not fight Iti thus manyase you think Mitya eshaha This is all false Bibasayaha determination Te, your, pakati, pakatihi, material nature, tvam, you, niyokshyati, will engage. Now before I read this translation, I'm going to read the previous translation because they go together. The previous translation is very, oh, God, I didn't, okay. So translation of 58 and 59. If you become conscious of me, you will pass over all the obstacles of conditioned life by my grace. If, however, you do not work in such consciousness, but act through false ego, not hearing me, you will be lost. If you do not act according to my direction you do and do not fight, then you will be falsely directed. By your nature, you will have to be engaged in warfare. Purport. Arjun was a military man and born of the nature of the Kshatriya. Therefore, his natural duty was to fight. But due to false ego, he was fearing that by killing his teacher, grandfather, and friends, he would incur sinful reactions. Actually, he was considering himself master of his actions, as if he were de uh, directing the good and bad results of such work. He forgot that the Supreme Personality of God it was present there, instructing him to fight. That is the forgetfulness of the conditioned soul. The Supreme Personality gives directions as to what is good and what is bad. And one simply has to act in Krishna consciousness to attain the perfection of life. No one can ascertain his destiny as the Supreme Lord can. Therefore, the best course is to take direction from the Supreme Lord and act. No one should neglect the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead or the order of the spiritual master, who is the representative of God. One should act unhesitatingly to execute the order of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That will keep one safe under all circumstances. Om Jnana Timarandasya Jnanandana Salakya Chakshu Unmidatam Mena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha I was born in the darkness of ignorance, but my spiritual master, Srila Prabhupada, opened my eyes with the torchlight of knowledge. I offer my humble obeisance unto him and all members of Sri Parampara. So, Krishna is winding up his instructions now in this uh, 18th chapter. And in the last two chapters, we've seen, a, we've read a lot about uh, things happening in different modes of nature. You may remember that the uh, 16th chapter ended with this, these two verses that are really important. And they set up the, the 17th chapter and the 18th chapter. And what uh, Krishna describes there, after a rather sobering chapter, mostly describing the demoniac nature, and he he says that, you know, the demons, I cast them down further and further, they go into a hellish situation. And the only way to escape this hell is to escape from the uh, control of lust, anger, and greed. I think that's it. It says, So there's three gates leading to this hell that I just described. Lust, anger, and greed. One who can escape these uh, three gates can go back to Godhead. 
Uh, what is it? What did he say? Uh, oh boy, I used to. I know them. They're in there, but my brain doesn't work like it used to. The, the person who has escaped these three gates of hell per performs acts conducive to self-realization and thus gradually attains the supreme destination. On the other hand, uh, that one who discards scriptural injunctions and acts according to his own whims attains neither perfection nor happiness nor the supreme destination. So it's very much an either-or situation. If you, if you obey your own conditioned intelligence, and in the morning classes we're reading this extended allegory which is uh, describing just that. Purunjan it simply means the living entity in the city of the body. So th this is the body is something described as a city of nine gates because there's nine the ears and the eyes and it, and it has up to nine gates. So Puranjan is now being seduced by his own uh, material intelligence it's in the form of a woman in the forest. You know, and, and he, he it's an extended uh, allegory given by Narada Muni describing all of us. So we have a choice. We've been given the choice because we've come in touch with this philosophy. And we, we're hearing Krishna's words and the words of his pure devotees. So uh, we can continue to uh, obey the demands of our lust, of our material desire, and its corollaries, anger, greed, and all that follows. Or we can consult the Shastra, the Shastra Vidim. And so the last verse of the 16th chapter, Tasma Shastra Pamanam Te Karya Karya Bhavastato, for evidence of what to do and what not to do, which is after all, what our life is consists of doing one thing and not another, isn't it? And doing you know creating kind of a, a a momentum in one direction, and having understood the instructions of shastra, one should uh, act according to those rules as a matter of duty, because spontaneously quote that's going to be acting whimsically according to our own material desire. That's what we don't want to do. We ne we realize that we need to act for our own shreya. Remember this word again comes up again and again. Yes, those who have escaped the gates of uh, to hell, which are material desire and anger resulting from frustration and greed, and these are the three gates. That person acts uh, for their own good and goes to the supreme abode. Well, how do you know how to act for your own good from the shastra? From the shastra. So. Uh, the beginning of the 17th chapter, Arjuna asks, Ye Shastra I don't know if that rings a bell. That's exactly what Krishna said you shouldn't do. You give up the Shastra Vidhi, the instructions of Shastra. Uh, what is the situation of those who do not follow the principles of Scripture but worship according to their own imagination? Are they in goodness, passion, and ignorance? And then we, we hear uh, this chapter is called The Divisions of Faith because one develops one's faith according to the mode of, of, of nature that you're being conducted by. If you're not being conducted by the Shastra, then you're going to be in one of these modes or, or your own private mixture of them. And your faith will be uh, in that direction. You can see it all the time. We have, we have faith in Prabhupada, in the, in the Shastra. We're working to uh, dovetail all our activities according to those. And so but it's, it's, uh, it's incongruous with the, uh, the what's going on in the vast majority of people, right? They have no faith in it. It's just, you know, I don't know what, you know, they put us in a different box, whatever it is. And then they go in about their business in their life. They have faith in their work. They have faith in their wife or husband. They have faith, you know, and, fa and faith is being betrayed again and again, you know. You, it's like just ordinary discourse. People meeting with each other is now dangerous. What if that person has COVID? They're breathing on me, you know. So an ordinary, ordinary uh, just meeting with people has become fraught and people are freaking out. There's all kinds of anxiety, you know. So uh, we have this whole chapter, the divisions of faith and, uh, you know, determination and charity and all these different things in, in uh, the, uh, under a different construction of faith. And it continues in the 18th chapter, specifically about uh, renunciation and sacrifice and charity. Remember those three, Krishna says, don't give them up. So he goes through this whole uh, section here, 17 and 18, and now he's coming to the conclusion, and he's really coming back to the essence of the whole thing. Why is the Bhagavad Gita being spoken specifically to Arjun, so that Arjun will uh, act according to Krishna's desire, 
even though it's completely against uh, uh, Arjun's uh, material desire. In other words, he the last thing he wants to do is to kill uh, Bhishma Dev, the worshipable grandfather. If you read the Bhagavatam, ninth chapter, first canto, you know you learn so much about uh, Bhishma Dev, how exalted he was. You know the lifelong brahmachari he sacrificed for his father. He became this, this uh, uh, one of the Mahajans. You know he offers these prayers to Krishna. He's exalted. He's revered by both sides, and here he is on the other. He found himself on the other side of the battle. And Arjun, he helped to raise the Pandavas when uh, Pandu died untimely. And now he, I'm going to be responsible for his death. That was like the last thing he wanted to think about. But to speak of his teacher, Dronacharya. And there's all these other friends and relatives, including the sons of Dhritarashtra, who were all cousins. And so Arjun has this whole argument in the beginning of the Bhagavad Gita, based on Shastra, why he shouldn't fight. You know, better I go begging. You know, and go off and go begging. Because he didn't want to get sinful reactions for himself, which he thought would happen, and he didn't want to be responsible in all of it. So that's the setting of the of the uh, of the Bhagavad Gita, but it's all Maya. It may be a it may be a, a refined kind of Maya. You know, he's being kind. He doesn't want to hurt the, the, you know these people because he has a rela relation. But the relationship is all bodily relationship. His mes most important relationship is with Krishna, who's right there on the chariot with him. And so the whole Bhagavad Gita is spoken, and in the course of doing so, Krishna talks about karma yoga and jnana yoga and dhyana yoga, and it all resolves in bhakti yoga, which, which has the most important elements of all of those. And we meditate, you know, we're sitting there chanting our rounds, you know, and we're trying to meditate on the holy name. And the kirtan is the same thing. We certainly do karma yoga, so much activity, giving the fruits to Krishna, Jnana Yoga, what is this all about? We're reading the Bhagavad Gita, we're cultivating knowledge, you know. But the whole point is to, to, to uh, uh, deepen and develop and re, re, uh, revitalize our relationship with, with Krishna. That's the purpose of the whole thing. And so now, after this whole chapter, he's coming to the point of, of saying in a few verses, Sarva Dharma Padichyaja. Give up all these dharmas I spoke about, you know. These are different kinds of dharma. And just do this one thing, surrender unto me, and everything will be taken care of. And that's really where the Bhagavatam begins and our whole philosophy begins, our whole practice. You don't have to worry about anything else. This is what's so wonderful. So here, Krishna is giving a very stark choice. Become conscious of me. If you become conscious of me, fully conscious, then you'll cross over all of the Durga, Durgani, this is text 58, impediments by my mercy. If we can get Krishna's mercy and grace, our life is perfect. You know, you don't have to get anything else. You'll cross beyond. But if you surrender to your false ego, based on the bodily concept of life, I'm related to this person, then vinunctiously, you will not by not hearing me, you will be destroyed. You know, you will be lost. And then the Alhankara comes in again, 59. This is the, the, these, ver these verses are tied up here. By, uh, by your false ego, if you uh, take shelter of the false ego, in other words, you're, you're, you're not taking shelter of Shastra, you're not taking shelter of my instructions, which are the origin of Shastra. You're not, not fighting on the basis of this false uh, sen bodily sense. Then it's all false. So your activities will be false, meaning that the term determination is based on a false platform and will lead to uh, defeat. By your own nature, you will end up fighting anyway. In other words, he's already a chakya. You know? He's going to fight, but it's not going to be in the direction of Krishna. He won't be blessed by Krishna. So this is a, you know, Krishna's winding up his argument, and I'm not, I guess I'm not giving anything away if I know that he's successful in arguing. <laughs> you know, you teach us, you talk to as you wish, I shall do. But this is all very instructive for us. Okay, any questions on 59? We can go on. So bhava jena konteya nibodha svena karmana kartam nechasi yan mohat karishyas yavashopitat Under illusion, you are now declining to act according to my direction. But, compelled by the work born of your own nature, you will act all the same, O son of Kunti. Purport, if one refuses to act under the direction of the Supreme Lord, 
then he is compelled to act by the modes in which he is situated. Everyone is under the spell of a particular combination of the modes of nature and is acting in that way. But anyone who voluntarily engages himself under the direction of the Supreme Lord becomes glorious. So this is a very important point. This came up way back in the, in the third chapter, the Karma Yoga chapter. Uh, Arjun, you know, he raised this question at the beginning of the third chapter, the beginning of the fifth chapter, is that, you know, the second chapter ends about, you know, merging into nirvana, you attain nirvana. Now nirvana, you generally think is, you're sitting there and just, you know, you're merged. <laughs> but then he says, oh, okay, you want me to attain nirvana, now you want me to, now you want me to fight in this war? That seems like anti-nirvana. What's going on, you know? And so then Krishna, you know, began to explain that you can't, stop doing anything. You can't not do anything. Even if you're sitting there, you know, you remember that in the fourth chapter it says uh, action and inaction? You know, you have to know that the difference between action and inaction and inaction action. One who can see this. So action and inaction means you're sitting there and you're not moving at all. The yogi, you know. But the mind is going. The mind is still active. And that, y you're acting. And even if so you've somehow stopped the, stopped the, the mind, you're doing that by force, because that's unnatural, to have no thoughts, no action, you know. So there, there's action, even in inaction. Now, where's the inaction in action? Inaction in that context means you're not getting any reaction. It's selfless activity. Every, or the, the you're giving the fruits to Krishna. Your motivation is to serve God. So even though you're doing so many things, as we do in the temple and we do outside the temple for Krishna, you know, it's, it's a type of inaction. Because you're not creating any karma. You're not creating any reaction for that. So that's the state of what's called nice karma. means activity that doesn't produce a reaction. This is what bhakti is. You know, that's, I mean, that's not what it is. But that's a, uh, a, a, a sign of it. Is that so many actions you're doing, but the motivation, the key motivation, is to please Krishna, please the spiritual masters. It's not uh, based on false ego. So that's, that's what he's saying now, that that... Uh, Arjun, uh, his whole determination not to fight is based on false ego. A false sense of self based on the body and relationship to so many others on the battlefield. Rather than measuring everything according to his most important relationship, which is to Krishna. Because Krishna wants him to fight, that alone should be enough to do it, even though he's you know, doing things that would otherwise seem completely abominable. This is, uh, this is full surrender. So he has a certain nature and that nature will de determine his activity anyway, because it's kind of built in. You know, that's uh, it's, it's training, his, his act, you know. And, and so that's going to act. If, it, if he fights against that, he'll be like he, like he is on the chariot, paralyzed. He drops the ball, he's crying, he's, you know, he's, he's not acting according to his, his nature. And he's, and he's not acting according to Christian desire. So, Kartam na itchasi yan mohat. This word itchasi, you know. That is uh, your desire. What does it say? Kartum, uh, not itchasi. You do not. Uh, you will act all the same. If you are declining according to your own desire, uh, eventually you will act anyway. But you'll miss the chance to do it for me, and you know you'll you'll be destroyed. So you'll be compelled to act. So the idea, is, you know, this is a very important point. Is that there's so many? I mean, I remember when I started practicing yoga. There was, uh, <laughs> I mean, it was a very childish when I look back at it. There were, there were fellow fellows who'd been there for months, for a few months. I just was new, you know. And they had been able to meditate for like uh, for an hour, you know, just like this, you know. And that was, he was really advanced, you know. And then like that, you know. I remember standing in line one time. This was to see uh, uh, Amala Bhakta's guru. He, was, he, he had his own ashram on, on the east side of New York. This is where I first started doing yoga. And so once or twice a year, his guru would come to, to, to New York, you know, and uh, he would insist on being put up into a, into a uh, penthouse in New York. You imagine how expensive that is, even for a week, you know. I mean, it wasn't just a penthouse, it was a whole suite. And you could line up and you could get some darshan, didn't call it that, but an interview, you know. And if you paid enough, you could get initiated, you know. So luckily I wasn't uh <laughs> bewildered, not bewildered. But we're standing in line waiting to, to, to go see him. And there was this young kid, he was even younger than me. I was maybe 23, and he was uh, in his teens, late teens. And he was wearing some kind of an outfit. It looked like, like a yogi thing from the Himalayas or something, you know. And he was, 
you know, the describing how, how he had practiced this pranayama and this thing and so forth, and you could do it for so many minutes and everything. It, it didn't really impress me, but it kind of <laughs> gave me an example of, of how you could get off into a cul-de-sac with these things, you know. And I w luckily I got, got away from that. Yeah, I was put off by it. You know, I was just saying, well, this is kind of childish, you know. But it's, but, uh, so, the, so the point is, is that we're, we're so fortunate to come, in, and the Bhagavad Gita's were flowing around. I mean, I read one Bhagavad Gita. It was a very, the slim volume, the uh, Penguin edition, you know. But no way. You, you, you try to think, if you were just reading the translations, and not Prabhupada's translations, which are, you know, <laughs> special, but just, you know, technical translations, you'd have no idea what to do. You certainly wouldn't, you know, start chanting Hare Krishna. That's not in the Bhagavad Gita. And how do I surrender to Krishna? You know, and, and s s I remember there was a group where they, they had the Gita, but it stopped at the end of the sixth chapter. Because they thought, well, this is the L culmination. You know, the sixth chapter is the meditation. Anyway, so here, here we are. So then, now the next verse is probably recorded all the time. It's on your list. It's near the top of the list. So you can memorize this one. Text 61. Ishwarak Sava Bhutanam Vidya Sher Janatishtati Brahmayan Sava Bhutani Yantra Rudhani Maya Now this, this this happens again and again in the Bhagavad Gita. How Krishna suddenly he goes into the third person and now he's describing how the Supreme Lord is living in your heart so you should surrender to him. The Supreme Lord is situated in everyone's heart, O Arjuna, and is directing the wanderings of all living entities who are seated as on a machine made of the material energy. Purport, Arjuna was not the supreme knower, and his decision to fight or not to fight was confined to his limited discretion. Lord Krishna instructed that the individual is not all in all. The supreme personality of Godhead, or he himself, Krishna, as the localized supersoul, sits in the heart directing the living being. After changing bodies, the living entity forgets his past deeds, but the super-soul, as the knower of the past, present, and future, remains the witness of all his activities. Therefore, all the activities of living entities are directed by this super-soul. The living entity gets what he deserves and is carried by the material body, which is created in the material energy under the direction of the super-soul. As soon as a living entity is placed in a particular type of body, he has to work under the spell of that bodily situation. A person seated in a high-speed motor car goes faster than one seated in a slower car, though the living entities, the drivers, may be the same. Similarly, by the order of the Supreme Soul, material nature fashions a particular type of body to a particular type of living entity so that he may work according to his past desires. The living entity is not independent, one should not think himself independent of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. The individual is always under the Lord's control. Therefore, one's duty is to surrender, and that is the injunction of the next verse. So, we've been wandering. We've been wandering in different planets and different species, different places and situations for so, so, so many, mm, who knows how many millions of births. And we've come to this situation now where we should want to put an end to that wandering, you know, and, f and reach the final destination. Lord, Lord Chaitanya's teaching through Rupa Goswami, in, in the first, practically the first verse of his teachings, the most famous one at the beginning, Brahmanda Brahmante Kon, Bhagavan Jeev, Guru Krishna Pasare Pai, Bhakti Lata Bij. So, Brahmanda, you know, the, this universe is sometimes referred to as Brahma's egg. You know, under means egg because it's covered by a hard, you know, like a, like so many layers, and there's some space in the middle where there's the water where Gabbadakshay Vishnu is lying, you know, and, and the planets and all these things. So Brahmanda, Brahmite, we've been wandering. Brahmite means wander. Kon Bhagibanji, the fortunate jiva, amongst all the trillions and quadrillions of jivas who've up and down different species, up and down the different planets for so long. Why is he fortunate? Uh, Guru Krishna Pasare Pai. He gets the grace of the spiritual master and of Krishna. It's said famously, by the grace of Krishna, you get a spiritual master. By the grace of spiritual master, you get Krishna. But what's the what's the the the, the way in which that 
the grace manifests the seed of the creeper of devotion. This is Lord Chaitanya's teaching to Rupa Goswami, very famous. So it's planted in the heart. Now what does that seed consist of? The seed consists of the instructions, and it consists of the holy name, and it consists of the faith in these. You know, so many people receive, you know, millions, uh, we've, we've distributed millions of literatures, mantra cards, the holy name, and it's all auspicious. Anyone who gets that and just looks at the holy name or chants it or hears it once, his life has changed forever. But the fortunate person uh, who hears or reads or somehow comes in contact with this, this mercy in the form of the holy name, instructions like that, association, and, it, and it, 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 the seed is planted to the degree that, that some faith is awakened so that you want to pursue it. It's, uh, it's interesting to you, you know? What, what, what is interesting to you is what forms your destination and what's your destiny. That's why the b whole Vedanta Sutra begins with this idea of interest. Atato Brahma Jigyasa. Now then, having come to the human form of life, you should inquire. You should be interested in the absolute truth. Where does everything come from? Who am I? Why am I suffering? If those questions don't arise, it's an animal existence. It's tragic, really. You know, when you realize what's really going on, you, you become convinced, you know, you first of all, you experience yourself, even to a small degree, the benefits of Krishna consciousness, and you realize the urgency for trying to give it to so many other people. We saw that in Srila Prabhupada so, so much, and those who he inspired to preach, you know, you know, undertake so much aus austerity. It's an emergency situation. It's always an emergency. Now, it, you can see the emergency, but it's always going on. Life is so tenuous. You know, we're, we're moving along on these, these little machines as just described in this verse, right? A machine made of the material, so fragile, so delicate. There's no time to waste. This is one of the signs of someone in the series. Don't waste any time. You know, we've been wasting so much time for millions of births. Now, every second count, make it count. Chant the holy name, you know, find some service, you know, systematically cultivate Krishna consciousness. Be serious. And, you know, it's, it's not an accident. I mean, it's very dramatic. This is a, a, a war scene. You know, it's the before the battle. You can imagine the tension here, you know. Will Arjun fight or not? You know, superficially, if he doesn't fight, then the, the Pandava side is in, has a big handicap. You know, so the whole fate of the earth is here being expressed. So the Prabhupada, you know, points out that we, we, don't, we don't know what to do when you come out of, of the womb. You know, we're completely confused. So the parents are ins inspired by the, by, the, by the super soul to, you know, take care of the child, you know, and teach him language and instruct, you know. And from within, we're getting so many impetuses as you grow up and, uh, you know, go do this, carry it on this way, you know. And, and our karma, wi which we have no idea, what, how, is it, how is it affected? How does it, you know, uh, work? Well, it's, it, it's, you know, incredibly complex. You know, every living entity has a super soul guiding him. And, you know, you go down the highway and you have some accident. Well, that's two people's karma coming together, you know. <laughs> I mean, it's just and the, only, the only one who can make it work and just a, and, and a just way, so you're getting your just desserts, good or bad, is God with kind of an omniscience. It's beyond any kind of computer program you could even imagine. So that's what's going on. And whether we're materially, uh, you know, uh, conditioned and just uh, acting on material consciousness or in Krishna consciousness, we're still being guided by Krishna. But the difference is that so the ordinary person who's just living an ordinary materialistic life, he's also, you know, what does it say? Matak smriti jnana mapohanamcha, 15th chapter. For me comes knowledge, forgetfulness, and remembrance, you know, and sanction. You can do it, you know. Uh, but not that the, the desire. In other words, Krishna has his own desires, and they're, they're, we're ignoring them. So he's the loving father. He'll keep guiding us in such a way that eventually, you know, our karma will be uh, fulfilled. And uh, if we're fortunate, you know, we'll, we'll get a, a clue about Krishna consciousness. But that, it doesn't matter whether you're in a tree body or an insect body or a Brahma's body. The same super soul is guiding you according to your, your activities, the modes that you're in. So he's, he's saying you should surrender unto him. But that same him that he's describing, which is far out, is standing before him in the chariot. And, and what we want to do 
is to reawaken that personal relationship with God, not just some technical thing that, oh, okay, this is my duty to do it, and I'll have to do it, you know. But the idea is that the duties that we're performing are all geared toward awakening our actual love for God, for Krishna. That's, that's the, what will take us back to Godhead. And that, w that is what will fulfill our you know, long cherished desires to enjoy in this world. I mean, uh, I mean we, that's good. this is the only world we know. But we're looking for enjoyment. But we're being frustrated again and again. Because we're looking in the material energy, material relationships, which by their nature are temporary. And, and we're eternal. Since we're eternal, we need a source of e eternal enjoyment. It's not a relationship with material bodies. It's a relationship with Krishna. Now, in devotees can enjoy, as we mentioned in the Bhagavad Gita and much more extensively in the Bhagavatam and everywhere, they can enjoy, even in this plane, by getting together, serving Krishna together, glorifying Krishna together. Remember, way back in the 10th chapter, there's four essential verses. And the verse one, Krishna is saying, Aham sarvasya bhavavo matak sarvabhavadade. I am that Brahman that's mentioned in the Vedanta Sutra. Everything comes from me. I created everything. The wise who understand this, they worship me with all their heart. And how do my devotees uh, worship me? Well, the, the first point is matchitta. They place their mind on me. In this age, especially kirtan. You know. Madgata prana, they, their life energy is directed toward my service. Bodhi and paraspadam. They come together and discuss my glories and glorify me together. And by doing that, uh, always glorifying me. You can see it in Prabhupada, whether he was talking to one guest or he's talking to 10,000 people in the Pandal in Bombay, or he's writing his purports, or he's writing his letters, or he's meeting with the, the, the uh, you know, some, some, high some cardinal or something, or some little reporter. He's always glorifying Krishna, you know, trying to plant that seed. So, they become satisfied and they, they enjoy spiritual happiness. And, and the ideal, the, the essence of all of that, the perfect paradigm is kirtan, sankirtan. I chant you here, you chant I here. It's complete. And we read the, read the CC. So many descriptions of Lord Chaitanya's kirtan. He was so saturated with love of God. He would, he would you know, somebody, they would just see him. Uh, he would come to some new town. They would, everyone would gather and go. And he would be chanting and dancing. They'd be astounded. Then they all get swept up in the prema. You know? <laughs> so this is, uh, you know, like a, you know, a, a, a elevator to take you to the top floor. So that's, that's the final goal. But we go step by step. And uh, instead of just, you know, letting the, spirit, the super supreme soul sanction or not sanction our material activities, we should listen to the, su to the su super soul. What does he want us to do? You know, and we ha we can't hear him, so we get it through the book. We get it through the Bhagavad Gita and the the uh, Guru. What is that? There's this line from a song. We sing every morning. Guru Mukha Padmavata Chitta Dekira Aike. But there's another song by Narottam Das Ta Thakur, which says a similar thing. Saru Shastra Guru Vakya Chitta Dekira Aike. The Sarus, the Guru, and the Shastra. If we th 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 those words, we should make one with our heart and act act accordingly. So that's the same thing as, as meeting the super soul. And then he makes all arrangements. I don't know if you've noticed, but I noticed when I first started coming how things would happen in my life that somehow I would always end up at the Hare Krishna temple. <laughs> <laughs> and I would meet somebody there. <laughs> I, I don't know if I told this story. That, uh, you know, I was doing the thing. I was had my job, had my own bank account, you know, had my little car. I, I was doing my yoga in the morning, going to work. You know, for a whole year I was doing that. Uh, I wasn't going to the temple for a year, but I had a job for you. And then uh, I got interested. I was doing uh, uh, raw food, you know, a lot of juicing. I was always hungry. And uh, <laughs> it's not easy. And so then I went to the Sunday feast. And of course, it's someone like me, I look at the Sunday feast, there's nothing I could eat. You know, I can't have any of it. You know. But I, I couldn't resist everything. Oh, I'll try a little bit. You know. <laughs> that was the end. So I tried a little bit, and I kind of totally addicted to halva. You know, and I would take, <laughs> they would pack, they, you know, for Sunday they would pack a half gallon. They had these half gallon milk cartons, you know. <laughs> okay, but, uh, Tom, but Tom, you come back in a week and give me another one. There's no way that half gallon lasted a, a week, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, one day, the Sunday feast, I've been reading the philosophy, you know, I knew the philosophy, I've been chanting a few rounds, you know, I had a big poster of the super soul on my wall. I was 
do my hatha yoga and do my pranayama and then I would do my two rounds and I'm standing in front of this poster and then I go to work. I'm chanting Hare Krishna the whole way. By the time I got to work <laughs> in the hospital, I was thinking, well, maybe I can just chant this mantra to all these people and cure them. <laughs> anyway, so uh, one Sunday, I'm sitting there and eating a big plate of halva, and there was this one uh, lady named Mahara. I, I would meet her periodically over the years in New Vrindavan. She retired there. And uh, she was trying to convince me, you know, because you know I was reading the philosophy. You'd read the books. I did the books, some of the Bhagavad Gita and so you know that everything belongs to Krishna, because they knew that I had a job, you know. And you know everything belongs to Krishna, right? You know? I said, yeah, 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 I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. So I go home, the next morning I'm chanting my rounds and I'm looking at that super soul picture, and all I can hear is the super soul thing. It all belongs to me. It all belongs to me. <laughs> <laughs> so I, br I emptied out my bank account, $1,500, 1973, you know, you can multiply by four at least, you know, five maybe. And so, uh, Anyway, it's a, it's a quite a story. So by the after I did that, uh, I had this idea that maybe I can I could get more time if I if I do the night shift, you know, instead of the day shift. I I just sleep some hours and I have all day. I could go to the city, come back, you know, and then take rest. That was my plan. So sure enough, the next day, you know, Super Soul had put a there was a uh, clipping on the bulletin board in our little office there with our little uh, in uh, uh, in um, in respiration workers was uh, centered, and it, it was an, it was a, it was an ad for a night shift job, what I was doing, and in a hospital that was like one fifth of the way, it was like basically a mile from where I lived rather than twenty miles. So this is it, this is it. So I went and got you know I had a very good recommendation. I've been a good worker, so I got a recommendation, and I was I was chosen. And I, I had a week of training, and then it was my first uh, night, you know, doing. It. I got completely spooked, you know. First of all, there was hardly anything to do. It was a much smaller hospital. Everyone was sleeping, you know. So I was just, and I wasn't, I, did, I wasn't good enough to just chant Hare Krishna. <laughs> you know, I wasn't doing that much. Anyway, it didn't work out. I told them after one week, I can't, I can't do it. I, I can't do this job. So now I had no job. I had no money. I gave my bank account, you know. And uh, I had fallen in love with Halva, so I might as well join the temple. <laughs> And that's how I joined. I was very blissful <laughs> after I joined. There was a lot of Hari Nam going on, you know, the half day, every like three hours a day. So that would help me. But uh, that later on, you know, after a while, I said, yeah, that's the super soul, you know, that pa that painting, you know, he had this plan. You know, and so I was working, you know, <laughs> making arrangements, you know. So so that's exactly what uh, is described here, is that the super soul is in everyone's heart and... Uh, He's guiding us, and even in our material uh, activities. But if we let him, he'll guide us in our spiritual activities, and mostly through the Shastra. That's what described. The Super Soul externally appears as the spiritual master and as the, the Shastra in order to guide the, 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 the devotees. And so we should take full advantage of that. Okay, so uh, I wanted to leave time to read something special. So we'll stop here for now. And we'll pick up in text 62 tomorrow. So I received this card from uh, Shamali. I think it was, it was planned, and they she had written this. And um, so I'd like to read this. It's really beautiful. And I'll hand this card out. You can all see it. There's a beautiful picture of here. And uh, she starts out, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare Rama, Hare Rama, 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 Rama. Dear friends, family, and well-wishers, thank you for all of your loving prayers and support throughout my life. And especially now, as I am preparing to depart from this material body, I love you all very much. In Krishna consciousness, we understand that the body is temporary, but that the soul is eternal. By spiritual understanding, we are able to see Krishna's guiding hand and to know that he is holding us closely through each of our journeys. Although this has been a shorter life for me than expected, it has been immeasurably full in sweet memories of service and association with each of you. Looking back on all of the eternal blessings that I've received in this life, I am overwhelmed with gratitude and appreciation. I was able to grow up in a very loving environment 
within San Diego's New Govardhan Hare Krishna community, and have my first memories be within the temple of Sri Sri Radha Hari, surrounded by their loving devotees. I will always cherish how much fun it was to be a part of the devotional dramas, kirtans, and amazing festivals. The most pivotal moment in this life was my first meeting with my spiritual master, His Holiness Indra Swami. He taught me how to develop truly lasting happiness and how to push beyond my comfort zone to share my good fortune with others. By his mercy, I was able to relish five summers of service on his festival tour along the Baltic sea coast of Poland and so many other wonderful Krishna conscious opportunities. I feel the kindness of Krishna, Srila Prabhupada, and my Guru Maharaj in having sent such a wonderful husband to share in these spiritual adventures. From the very beginning, he has inspired me in my Krishna conscious development and encouraged me to grow in so many ways. Together we are deeply grateful for all the service opportunities, guidance, and friendship we have been blessed with. I hold so much gratitude to be uh, I hold so much gratitude to be here in such a beautiful and supportive environment with my family, friends, and so many special and uplifting relationships. I welcome your continued prayers for my journey ahead, and I look forward to being reunited with all of you again someday in our eternal home in the spiritual world. Thank you, Srila Guru Dev, for your love and encouragement, which bring me so much clarity and strength in this and all circumstances. Yours in service, Shamali Dasi, Gaur Charanandarak. Hare Krishna. And now there's some quotes here in the back. Uh, from Vishnu Chakrabarti in his Nakunda Keli Virudavali. O all auspicious Krishna, may you be victorious. You perform all kinds of sweet pastimes. Let my name also be there when you count Sri Radha's associates. This is my prayer. Although I am covered by material consciousness, I can still aspire for this. O oh Lord, may my prayer be fulfilled. And it says here that an online memorial will take place soon. And please go to shamalidasi.com. So, so just hand this around. I think there's time. You can, you can hear it. It's a beautiful picture in there of her. All right, so I have a, a couple of minutes. I'll just give you a few of the poems. Uh, I spent like three or four days uh, about a few weeks ago uh, reading from some of my poems to her, and we read something from the Chaitanya Bhagavat, and I, I sent her. And you know that darshan, uh, uh, the, uh, the deities here. I took some pictures of uh, Bhattagirid Hari and the other deities. This is in the 2000, and it's a, a different mood. And so I sent, uh, I sent those to them, and they, they appreciated it. So it's quite a lesson. I mean, we heard, you know, how she was in such a wonderful consciousness, you know, at that time of, l of leaving the body. So we should all pray that we can be in such good consciousness as that. Okay, so uh, from, uh, oh, from Rishabdev, inspired by Lord Rishabdev's famous prayer or famous instruction, 551. Uh, oh, friend, don't, don't waste this precious... Uh, don't waste your precious human life, dear friend, uh, working hard for hoggish happiness. Through bhakti yoga, worldly life transcend and learn to taste divine love's endless bliss. So this is uh, such an important verse about austerity. He's really saying there's uh, to his sons, you know, that uh, his last instruction before he takes off and takes sannyas. And uh, a nice prayer to have... Uh, for love for Krishna. Bhujanga de Pachandaka, you reminded me of this. Bhujanga de Pachandaka, Spoda de Kanda Chudankare, Naranka Shadra Ganchada, Brahmina Badna Bringa Brahme, Patanga to Hitistati, Banakuti, the Kari Priye, Paraspoda to Me, Mahostai, Makunda Shudharati. You wear the best of crests, a crown of perfect peacock plumes. Your dancing glances stun the bees, meandering midst the blooms. You relish love play in a cottage by Kalindi shore. O Krishna, may pure love for you. Be mine forevermore. Okay, one more. Madhuradesha Madhuri Maya Madhava Madhuri Maktalika Mugdha Mama Manda Namoha Namada Madha Himana So Maha Maha Moham I think we had that one this morning. Anyway, ever fresh. O Master of Mathura, lovely Lord of Goddess Sri, who plays such maddening melodies upon your Murali. O Cupid's Charmer, please redeem a life till now misspent by joyfully destroying my extreme bewilderment. Hare Krishna. 
Okay, all glory to Shri Prabhupada.